most so dusty and sweaty but I got it all ground clean and ready to stack up into the final build so with the help of my friend Jacob Drescher uh, I forged out this billet into a uh, 
very long strip in a very long bar of 1095 and 15 and 20 steel and now it's time to restack it and I will add a few other fresh pieces of 1095 in it so I have like a dark layers and then the bright detail uh, so that's what I'm going for and hopefully I will have a big enough billet to forge it out into the Yadagan sword so it's time for me to eat but tomorrow I will cut this up into so it's the next day it's time to cut up the piece of Damascus into a few pieces and restack it and weld it into one solid bar of 400 layers 500 layers something like that and then it's time to forge the Yadagan sword and I think that's something for tomorrow or so but I had just had a great phone call with uh, Mert Tansu he's a uh, knife maker especially kitchen knife maker you can find him on Instagram right here and he makes some great looking kitchen knives and he's a uh, Turkish guy and he told me everything about the Yadagan sword I wanted to know so uh, I now know how to design it even better so it's time to forge Damascus and after that it's time to forge the Yadagan oh. So, yesterday I forged the rough shape of the blade using uh, the fly press and the help of a friend. So, now it's time to forge uh, the whole blade and refine the shape of it and forge in a little bit of the bevels and all that stuff. But before that I want to manipulate the pattern a little bit. It's still a straight layer and I don't want a straight layer. I want a little bit more, little bit more action inside of the steel. So, I'll cut some grooves inside of it and then flatten it, stretch it out even more, still to wide, all that stuff and then just force the shape of the blade
so I just did the grinding on the Yadagan sword. Well, I just ground off the scale off of the flats and off of the bevels. And I just cleaned the bolster area a little bit. I just want to leave it nice and beefy before heat treat because I just don't want to risk to warp this thing in a very, very bad way. So The next step is to uh, clean those bolster area, clean the bolster area a little bit more with some files and then uh, it's on to for uh, it's on to grinding the the tank and drilling a hole inside of that so Just go slowly. Ooh. Just this method of putting it in a charcoal fire it gives it such a nice even heat, and I'm really happy with it. And this, I think it's normalizing cycle number four. And I'm doing this more than normally because I want to ensure it's soft and it hopefully doesn't warp. Fairly. It's just skating a fire like that was like one minute or two minutes of footage but this took like seven hours actual time for me to send all up to 400 grit and it's ready for etching
So after a month of very hard work, the sword is finally finished and I'm really happy with it. It's shiny and it's sharp and the iron wood is just fabulous. I'm gonna bring the sword with me to the Dutch knife exhibition and that's my first exhibition. It's my first sword as well, so that's pretty cool. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please share it with your friends. That really helps me uh, to grow my channel and to motivate me to make more videos for you. So that's a good thing. Good thing for me, good thing for you. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, have a great day. Thanks for watching.